On rice, please. He stepped down the hall to see JB has desperately to turn in. Okay. Go to um, Brian Berry. He's not here. Uh, how about uh, A.G. Woodward? All right, so we'll go to um, Harold uh, Rose, Ros Rosen. Is he here? All right, the last card I have <laughs> is for Megan Tuttle. She here. Yes. Ms. Tuttle, welcome. Thank you for uh, coming and welcome to House Education. Thank you, Mr. Chairman, members of the committee. I have say I feel like I'm the person holding you up before lunch, so <laughs> I'm the last one. I'm sorry. sorry. Um, for the record, I'm Megan Tuttle. I'm the president of NEA New Hampshire. We represent about 17,000 educators across the state. It ranges from ESP, the education support professionals, to teachers. We include, um, we have uh, cafeteria workers, bus drivers, paraprofessionals, tutors, secretaries, anybody working in the education profession. Um, I'm also a mom of three boys that do go to school in the Concord Public Schools. I have a kindergartner, a second grader, and a sixth grader. Um, and so I'm a parent also. And in New Hampshire is in here, is here in support of House Bill 564. Um, I heard a lot of talk today about teachers and what teachers think and what teachers don't think and what they want and don't want. They couldn't be here today because the hearing was scheduled at 9, or 10, excuse me, um, and they were in the classroom, but I do have testimony from them. I believe these are all emails that were sent to the committee, but I can certainly pass these in if you'd like them for the record. So that is from the educators in New Hampshire. I can't speak for every single one, but I can speak for the majority of them that I've heard from, from Columbine to Virginia Tech to Sandy Hook to Parkland. More than 240 lives have been lost in violence in schools. Last April, I New mean, Hampshire held a rally out in front of the state house, and on the lawn, we put a white chair up for every life that had been lost in um, an education setting from gun violence. You can say over 240 as a number, but when you see the chairs that were sitting there empty, one to represent every life, it adds another layer to it. It just adds another level of this is this is what's been going on. I've heard a lot about lockdowns and the drills that have happened. I've been in them. I've heard about them as a parent from my three boys through Beaver Middle School and also through Runlet. And I've been in them as a teacher. I taught eighth grade social studies for 18 years. And so I've been in those situations where I have the eighth graders looking at me. There was one in particular two years ago where we thought it was just a drill. We came over to the intercom, this is a lockdown, this is a drill. Or we thought it was a drill, and then all of a sudden the lights didn't go back on in the hallway. And we had electric, or we had um, automatic lights at that point, so they were motion sensor. So as soon as the kids started realizing, they looked at me and said, this isn't a drill, is it? And I said, no, I don't think it is. So now I have 24, about 24 eighth graders looking at me, thinking, okay, you need to get me out of here. Guns don't belong in schools, though. Even having been part of those drills and knowing what can happen, guns do not belong in schools. Um, we're in support of this because safe school zones really should be safe school zones. We don't need guns coming into the classrooms and schools. Um, you know, this is not going to stop violence. Passing this bill is not going to stop violence. There's a lot of other issues that need to be dealt with as well. And so some of those are things like funding for mental health resources, funding for mental health education, things like that. But this is a step towards it. This is a step towards making the kids feel safer in school, making the educators feel safer in school, just basically making everyone feel safer. We don't need any more of the white chairs that are going to be sitting in front of the White House, or I'm sorry, in front of the State House lawn. Thank you, Ms. Tuttle. Are there questions for Ms. Tuttle? Representative Wolf. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you for taking my question. Um, this issue of lockdown drills has bothered me. And I understand how traumatic they can be. And as a first responder, I'm involved in drills. Would you suggest that even if this bill passes, that we do away with lockdown drills? As an educator, no. Um, and I'm speaking for myself now, not as president of any of New Hampshire. Um, I do believe, I know that they're traumatic for kids, but unfortunately, it's part of the society we live in now, and I think the kids do need to have the drills because they do need to know what, to ha what they need to do if something were to happen. So, 
you know, it, it's, it's tough to say they, they should go away because of how traumatic they can be, but on the other hand, they need to have that practice. You know, growing up, we had fire drills, so we knew to get in the line to go out. Unfortunately, my kindergartner comes home, and the, the new normal is that we had a lockdown drill today. Um, the teachers have, you know, not taken a step for him to tell them that it's because of a shooter coming into the school. They talked about coyotes and, you know, things like that coming into the school because he's six. Whether or not that was the best thing to do, you know, that's, that's debatable, but my kindergartner <laughs> felt a little better about a coyote coming in than, you know, somebody coming in with a gun after him because, again, he's six. Um, but I, it's the new normal. I mean, that's, it's part of what it is, unfortunately. And, you know, that's why I think, and I said earlier, this bill won't address every single issue. It's not going to solve it. It's a step towards it. We need more resources in the schools for dealing with the mental health crisis that we have going on. I mean, that's, that's going to, I think, let people be more educated and let us deal with the kids that are coming to us with the, with the traumatic experiences from home. We can only do so much as educators, and we want that place to be a safe place for children. A lot of them, and people have mentioned it today, a lot of kids are coming in from homes where they're seeing guns, they're seeing drugs, they're seeing all those things happening, and school is the safe place for them. And we need to make sure that school stays that safe place for them. Thank you. Uh, any further questions? Thank you, Ms. Tuttle, for your testimony. Thank you. I will hand in my written testimony and scribble on. But right. Thank you. Uh, not having any further cards, I have four hearing on uh, six, five, six, four. Before everybody leaves, though, I, I, on behalf, on behalf of the education committee, excuse me, excuse me, David. On behalf of the education committee, I want to thank you all for being here today. Uh, I can only speak for myself, but I have appreciated hearing the stories from everyone, and I've learned, I've learned things today that I didn't know before. And I want, to th I, want, I want to thank you for myself for sharing your story so at least I'm a better informed now on the issue than I was before. The committee now will meet in executive session next week and we will, we will move on both, we'll make a decision on both of these uh, bills and your input has been very helpful as we go into our deliberative session next week. Thank you so much for being here.